What up, what up? Here we are with another episode of the Who's Where podcast. We have a special guest, a very special guest. I think this is our first Olympic gold medalist or Olympic medalist in uh, on the podcast. Lauren Purdue, what's up? Hey, thanks for having me. Of course. This is fun. Uh, Dom, what's up, Dom? Chilling, man. I'm happy to be here. I uh, just had my newborn son, Justice. Congrats. Hey. Congrats. So, you know. It's just, you know, getting adjusted, but it's good, man. The first week of fatherhood is like sudden change, <laughs> sudden change in the football game, man. Like, you know, you just be sitting on the bench. The next thing you know, you just got to find your helmet and, and make adjustments on the fly. But it's fun, though. It's fun. Man. I can't complain. Other than that, I'm just waiting for the birds to do their thing tomorrow, man. Hey, we got to we got to see. We got to check Dom's checkbook, man. His bank account. I think he's getting paid over there to represent some sponsors or something. Man. He got- yeah, right. <laughs> oh, man. Right for a man. You know Shout out your little bro. Yeah. You feel me? Just drank his little Tumblr cup. He had a little logo on his Tumblr cup. You know what I'm oh, saying? Oh, no, this, yeah. this is my, this is my, uh, this is my, I got black tea in here, but yeah. Okay. Yo, oh, that's awesome. Yeah. yeah. Established you know 2020. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, this, this tea had a real good temperature right now, too, so. Oh, my God. Max, what's up? Hey, what's going on, world? Man, you know, I'm here from Charlottesville, representing my Redskins today. I signed the football team. Hey, the way, dog, Dallas. All y'all Dallas fans. 2-5. Y'all may not know, but that's Chase Minifield right there. Oh, no, yeah, five, man. Man. You know what I'm saying? I've been waiting for the of my jerseys for about eight years now, but that's okay. I'll, I'll get signed on these days. That boy, that boy McKissick did me dirty in fantasy, man. He only got like three <laughs> points, man. Oh, man. Word. That's man. crazy. Let's go ahead and jump into this. So, Lauren was at school at UVA. Why after the Olympics? That doesn't make any sense in my head. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, I didn't redshirt or anything. I just went right through it. But yeah, that's crazy. Was you treat? Were you treated different in on campus? Like, what was your big person on campus? Um, you know, a little bit of that. Um, I would say I don't know. I mean, the pe- the people that like really, you know, kept up with athletics, like obviously the athletes. But then there were some you know, like students, regular students that maybe, you know, recognize me, but not like anything crazy, you know, but a little bit. It was kind of fun, but did you sound it's kind of weird. Maximilian you know, <laughs> status on campus, huh? That Maximilian status. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Uh, so Lauren, um, just tell us where you're, what you're up to right now. What are you doing? Yeah. So um, I was telling Chase a little bit when we got on, but I, um, I moved to Charlotte um, right after I graduated. So right at right after, um, I guess, yeah, it was right. It was probably October of 2013. Um, and I've been here. I actually, um, moved here to swim professionally and did that for about a year and a half and, um, just had like some, you know, nagging injuries that kept coming back. So I ended up having to retire in 2014 and got right into commercial real estate, which is what I'm doing now still, um, here in Charlotte. So I work for a commercial real estate company called Northwood Retail. We're um, headquartered in Dallas and we've got a office here in Charlotte. So I handle the properties we own in North Carolina and South Carolina. Nope. So we're just going to jump all the way back. So we know what you're up to now. So tell us, you're born in Charlottesville. Is that right? I was. Yeah. That's like a fun fact that I even forget, honestly. Um, yeah, I know. I was born there. Um, my dad was, so my dad actually swam for UVA. He swam for Mark Bernardino, who was the coach I swam for. Um, and then my dad ended up going to med school there. So I was born in the, I, I forget the name of the hospital, but I was born there. Um, and I lived there for like, you know, the first year of my life. And then we moved all over the place for my dad's residency. So no, but yeah, so, I claim Charlottesville as my birthplace. Though. <laughs> I've seen it. So you're, you're you're technically a townie, a townie. Uh, exactly. <laughs> I am. I'm one of those townies. Yes. No, yeah. so, uh, so are you a UVA uh, fan growing up? Like, is that why you ended up at UVA? Yeah, I was. Um, you know, my um, my parents and my mom went to nursing school there and my dad went to obviously undergrad and then graduate. So we had like a really strong UVA bond in our family and um I just grew up like loving watching the swim program. Um, I like idolized them. Like Ed Moses was one of the swimmers um, back in, I think the early nineties or late eighties. Um, he was an Olympic gold, or an Olympic. He was an Olympian and anyway, but so I just idolized the program and, and just thought it was really neat. And um, I just, I don't know, from then on, I just kind of had this love for UVA um, and my 
older sister actually ended up swimming there um, back in. Uh, so she was a year and a half older than I was, but one you know grade above me. So when she was there, I was like, OK, now I definitely have to go. And so we we were teammates for, you know, a good three years. So it was really cool. Yeah. So this is a fun fact. You know, I was a swimmer growing up. Max, you darn <laughs> swimmer. <laughs> Yeah, I didn't believe him. I didn't believe him until we hit the AFC and we were yeah, racing. He was out there. And, and, oh, and, and, and he pulled ahead of me and I saw him do, I saw him do a little flip turn, John. I was like, oh man, this boy legit. You did a flip <laughs> turn? That that yeah. is like some legit stuff right there. Yeah, I I'm was, impressed. I was like, hey, I was like, this is what I wanted to ask you. Like, when did you like take it and be like, all right, I'm better than these people. I'm about to try to take it like <laughs> I'm about to try to get a scholarship and, and I can really make this like a career, maybe get to the Olympics. Like when did that become yeah. a in your head? Yeah, I so I um I was probably like 13, like early teens when I kind of realized like I had, you know, like I had a potential and um, you know, I could take this places and I could hopefully get a scholarship to swim and then, you know, go from there, maybe Olympics. Um so yeah, it, it was probably early teens when I like really started to kind of like hone in on like, you know, what my potential was or what my goals were. Do you like, are you like winning everything in like club and neighborhood swim teams and all those different type of things like that? Like, are you like winning a hundred percent? Yeah, well, yes. I mean, kind of. Yeah. So <laughs> I, well, so um, I was like state champion in some events. And so in North Carolina, like I was, I'd say in my events, I was like probably number one, if not like right, you know, right below I was, like top in my events. Um, nationally, I was probably like, this was high school. I was probably like top 16 in my events nationally. So, um, you know, pretty good, like up there. Yeah. Like as far as, you know, to, to be considered by, um, some good D1 programs. Word. Let me see. What, what, I don't remember my time. First of all, once it, once the distance got longer, I stopped swimming. So <laughs> 25 meters, I was, I could, I could get anybody a 25 freestyle breaststroke, you know, butterfly, not back. Yeah. I don't do the on my back stuff, but uh, I hear you. I hear you. <laughs> uh, 25 <laughs> meters. But once it got to 50 and 50 was like the one lap thing. I was like, nah, yeah. it's, it's a wrap. Like the Olympic, the Olympic size pool. Olympic. Yeah. Yeah, cause. it's it's honestly it's like more into, it looks more intimidating than it is, you know, like it looks like it's like a world away, but it's really not. It's it's just slightly longer than like a 50 yard pool. You know what I mean? Like it's just slightly longer. It's like seven yards of like longer. So. This, is my, this is my embarrassing story. So there's a <laughs> team uh, that's like a local team here in Lexington, Kentucky. That's like called Wildcat Aquatics. It's like a I don't know, I've heard of them. It's like yeah. eight or whatever. I don't know what it is, but it's outside. Yeah. Of and, um, you know, I thought I was doing something. These are like serious swimmers. These are like Lauren swimmers, right? I was just like the summertime swimmer. And um, I they I only did like certain strokes, but they were like putting me in these random things. And all of a sudden they put me in a medley, which is um, all the strokes, right? You got to do all the yeah. strokes in one race. And it was like, I don't know, maybe like 1,600. Is that like four for each, each stroke or something like that? 1,600? I, I don't know. It was some, some, some way outside my wheelhouse. <laughs> <laughs> there's definitely not a 1600 medley because uh, that would be but it was like you had to do every stroke and i'm not sure if i had to go down and back or like down and back twice for each maybe stroke. like a 200 200 medley so yeah, like two like laps of every stroke yeah probably something like that That makes sense yeah so eight times, guys. this is eight times each stroke and Oof. you start off with um you know i think it's backstroke first or, or maybe butterfly i don't know a long time ago but this is the story this is the story like i don't <laughs> practice this <laughs> I don't practice this and they put me in this randomly for the match like this is game time this is not practice right so I try I'm gonna, I'm gonna try to win of course I'm gonna try to win but essentially I just didn't have the cardio you haven't practiced you don't have the cardio to do <laughs> so I'm gassed out I'm gassed out here yeah. we got about three laps to go everybody's <laughs> finished everybody's finished bro like they're about to start the next race before I finish like everybody's on the block <laughs> they're like come on <laughs> and, I'm out, and I'm beating out the water as everybody's on the blocks, I'm like, never again. Never, oh, man. Never that again. is, yeah. I've never smoked like that in anything in my life. Like, to the where, to the point where they were about to forget you was in the water. <laughs> <laughs> that is so funny. I'm yeah, good. swimming, is, yeah, it's like this cardiovascular. It's, it's crazy. Like, I don't swim as much anymore. And when I do go and try and swim, I'm, like, so out of breath. Because it's, like, I mean, it's just it's yeah. different, you know? Holding yeah. your breath and... Yeah. That was embarrassing. That was probably my most embarrassing loss 
of my life because it's individual sport. It's not a team sport. You know what I'm saying? So you can't blame anybody but yourself. And I wanted to get out there and I wanted to cuss out the coach and be like, yo, are you serious? Why you just, why you do that? <laughs> You know what I'm saying? You really can't. You really can't say nothing because they like make the matches like before the race, and you just come and see what you're doing that day or whatever. So, man, that was just like devastating. Brutal. I think that was my last race, actually. To be honest with you, I was like, all right, they don't have my best interest at heart. That's like my thing. Um, so you go to UVA, Lauren, and uh, I were you top recruiting the country? Like, I don't know if they have like those recruiting things or and it's, it's um, you know, swimming. But. You know, that's actually a good question. I don't even remember what my like rank was at that point. I wasn't the top recruit. Um, I don't know. I may have been like top 16 or something. I don't even, I don't know. Um, but yeah, I, I looked at like, so I took, um, I took three recruiting visits before I decided on UVA. Uh, I'm sorry, two before I decided on UVA. Um, I went to Auburn. Um, Auburn was like one of my top choices. Um, I went to Tennessee. Um, that was also one of my top. And then, um, I'm sorry, one more Georgia, um, university of Georgia was another really good program. So, and I liked all three, but, um, when I went on my visit to UVA, I was like, this is it for sure. So So how are these, like, where is UVA, UVA ranked like in like a historical, like swim team? Like, can you give us us an idea? Like who, who is like, I feel like all UVA sports outside of football, are like nationally contenders all all, all the time. Yeah, so UVA for the swim program, um, at least for the women's right now, we, I mean, and I think obviously with COVID and everything, things are not going to be normal this next season, but we actually have a chance at being number one in the nation. Like we are that good right now as a swim program. Um, I mean, better than they ever have been in the history of UVA swimming for women. Um when I was there, I think the best that we scored at NCAAs as a team was, I want to say eight. We took an eighth, eighth place finish, which was huge, you know, for the program. I think at that point it was the best we had ever scored. Um, I'm pretty sure in, in the history of the program. So for now, like, you know, flash forward to now where the program is literally like seated, I mean, top you know, top three, I think, I think they actually have a chance at like winning NCAAs. That's huge. That's it's huge. Good. That's crazy. I feel like when we were there, you guys always were like back to back the four or five years I was there was every year ACC championship. ACC like, championship. I was guaranteed yeah. pretty much. Yeah. That, uh, we, you know, really kind of took pride in, in you know, really dominating the ACC when I was there and, um, you know, our NCAA finishes were always, you know, they were okay, not stellar, but ACCs, we knew going into the, the meet that we were going to win it. You know, we were that confident. So now it's like, you know, they're going into ACCs like with the vision of winning NCAA. It's like a totally different like mindset, which is really cool. But yeah, it was such an honor. I mean, just, you know, to, to be ACC champions, like I forget, I think it was like eight times you know, in a row when, when uh, I was there. Obviously, the four years I was there, but then four more years. So it was really cool. Yeah. And Super cool. We over here just trying to beat Virginia Tech. That's how that's how going into the season. Let's beat Tech. You know, Let's beat yeah. Tech. Seriously. Right. <laughs> uh, that's solid. So essentially, um, we show up to UVA. What did you did did academics have anything to do with it, or was it all, you know, mm-hmm. sisters here? Uh, my dad went here, all these different things like that. Like what was the final thing? That yeah. Started? Yeah. I mean, academics was definitely really important. Um, I, um, you know, I received a scholarship to swim at UVA, but you know, the, the reason I really chose UVA was also, you know, because of my family ties, but really because I mean, the academics, you know, I mean, sports are, you know, sports are going to last, you know, four to eight years, maybe more, you know, if you're lucky, but your, you know, your education is, is what takes you places, you know, beyond that. So that was really important to me when I was deciding on a school. And, um, I felt like the programs that I was looking at, you know, really kind of, uh, you know, had kind of the best of both worlds, academics and athletics. So UVA just kind of was like a natural fit. And, um, I just couldn't, I couldn't be happier with my decision. I, you know, never looked back at that point. So never looked back. What did you study? Um, I, yeah, I was an anthropology major, actually. 
Okay. Yeah. Um, which at the time, I don't know if it's still considered, but at the time it was considered the athlete major. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so you had a lot of football like, players. Lot of football yeah, players. yeah, I was gonna <laughs> exactly. There were a ton of football players, ton of wrestlers, ton of soccer players. Obviously, I think I was like one of the only swimmers, believe it or not. Um, but it was super fun. Yeah, it was it was a fun major and just being like around all these athletes all the time in these classes was really fun. So I'm sure it. I'm sure that was interesting. Did the uh, yeah. did the football players have a reputation of getting to the class late? Or oh yeah, all the time. <laughs> 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 Never <Yeah>. failed. <laughs> uh, so that was good. That was you, studied, you studied anthropology. Did you have a, any um, intent on using that degree, or what did you? What was your thought process in going through the anthropology? Yeah. So. Um, anthropology is, it's a really interesting major. It really is. I enjoyed, I really enjoyed it. Um, it's only really, I mean, people might disagree, but I think it's only really useful if you're going to decide to do like field work. Like, so my focus was archeology. span I really loved archeology span and, um, kind of like ancient, you know, civilization and stuff, but like that only really comes into play if you're like an anthropologist, like working in, you know, Egypt or something. Do you know what I mean? Like, so, or like if you decide to be a professor or something. So I just really simply chose it because I was interested in it and not even thinking about my future or like job, you know, prospects after that, which was not very smart, but it, you know, it worked out fine. Um, commercial real estate is, you know, there's a lot of different backgrounds in the field and, um, it's just, I don't know. It's interesting. I, I feel like there is kind of a connection with anthropology and commercial real estate in a way. So solid. Um, so let's get into the juicy stuff. So <laughs> we go to uh, the Olympics. Did you know that you were going to the Olympics or were you training for the Olympics the whole time? Like what was, how do you even, how does this even come to your mind? When do you start training for that? Like most people I know are like not in school and they're going to the Olympics and they've been training for yeah. so long. Like talk yeah. about the process. Sure. So, um, you know, I, when I went to, when I committed to UVA, um, in my mind, you know, I had kind of that goal that I had set when I was, you know, in my teenage years of the Olympics. And I had always set my mind on the Olympics in 2012. Um, you know, they happen every four years. So I just felt like 2012 would be a really good time for me in my swimming career. Um, I would be, a rising senior at UVA, I would have, you know, three years of, you know, college swimming under my belt. I would be 21 years old. I just felt like it was like a really good chance for me. If, you know, if I had a chance, that was my chance in making the Olympic team. So I kind of, from that point on had my sight set on 2012 and um, it was in London. And so for swimming, you have to qualify, um, to make, you have to qualify for the Olympic trials, which for every sport, I think you do too, obviously. But so the Olympic trials for swimming, um, take place like the month before the Olympics, um, every four years. So i had already qualified for the Olympic trials. And so then when you go to the Olympic trials, you're competing against, you know, the best swimmers in the U S to try and make that, you know, 25 persons team to go compete in the Olympics. So they take 25 men, 25 women, so 50 total. But um, so when I went to Olympic trials in 2012, I actually had, and I don't, there might be, you know, y'all might know about this, but I actually had this really bad back injury um, like that whole year before that I was dealing with. And I ended up having to have back surgery um, about three and a half months before the Olympic trials. So I had kind of like, I was in like this really bad headspace and I, you know, wasn't even sure like if I was even going to make the team, if I did go to Olympic trials, you know, I was still like in a lot of pain. I was just had surgery. So I was like, could have basically like discounted the fact that like, you know, like this was not my year anymore, basically. So when I went to the trials, um, I ended up like being able to swim and I had recovered enough to be able to compete. Um, I'd already, you know, qualified to swim in the meet. So I actually ended up like, it was kind of a miracle. Like I ended up um, swimming lifetime best times, you know, in all of my events are my 200 freestyle event. Um, and I ended up, you know, swimming 
fast enough to be able to make that final of the 200 freestyle. Um, and then from there, I ended up finishing fourth, which automatically secured me for the Olympic team and the four by 200 freestyle relay. So it was like a whirlwind year for me, just with my injury and then having to have a surgery and like not knowing, you know, like if I was even going to be able to swim again. I mean, it was just like a crazy, crazy year. Um, just yeah, a whirlwind. You know what I'm saying? I'm going to pop my back. Like, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. How did you, how did you even hurt your back in general? Um, was it a, like a freak accident or what was the issue? So it was kind of a, it was very rare, like for a swimmer. Um, I, it was actually a stress fracture in my, um, like lower, like right above my pelvis. So that's L5 S1. So very like lowest vertebrae. Yeah. And they think it was from maybe a combination of lifting and, you know, just over usage, like too much swimming. Um, I was a freestyler primarily. I didn't do any other strokes. So my body position in the water, you know, is like this constantly. And so all that pressure on the back of my spine, just constantly, you know, just over and over and over. So I don't know, they think it was maybe kind of a combination of that. And um, I just, I don't know, it was the doctor that saw me was like, I've never seen something like this in a swimmer. Like it just didn't really make sense. So that's crazy. Did it, did it like, you know, I've been in those doctor rooms and they give you those unfortunate news. Did, was it, was it like a breakdown moment for you or you were like, I, so, I don't know what I have ahead of me right now. <laughs> yeah. So what's crazy is that, um, like beginning of my, I guess it was beginning of my junior year, I started having this back pain and I kind of like swam through it, you know, didn't complain about it. It got so bad. Like I couldn't walk. I had to get a handicap pass for my car to go to class. Like it was bad. So I ended up like, I obviously saw a doctor. I got an x-ray and they said, they're like, we don't see anything abnormal on your x-ray. And I'm like, this doesn't make sense. I literally am in so much pain. Like something is wrong, but they didn't see anything. So Six months later, I'm like still debil, you know, like debilitated, like can't do anything, can barely swim, obviously. And I had that same X-ray reviewed by a new set of doctors, and immediately they're like, "Oh, there's a stress fracture right there." Mm. Six it's, months. It, I lost it's, six it's, months. It's yeah, insane. that's crazy. Um, so then, at that point, like they took a new X-ray and it had gotten obviously much worse, and like a piece of bone had broken off of where like the fracture was. It was just like a disaster. So. Well, the, the handicap stick is a solid on UVA's campus for sure. I oh, know that's, with that's those gold right there. I know it. Those parking or spaces are want. gold. Yeah, <laughs> I may have let some of my friends use it occasionally for class. <laughs> I know Max had one too. I don't want to call him out, but uh, I don't Come know, man. You know, hey, you know me, I had a stress fracture in my foot. Matt, you know, Matt's always got the hookup somehow, somewhere. Yeah. I, they're I, I class. <laughs> yeah, they're key. Sorry. Hold on, let's bring this back to London real quick, though, man, because there's a rumor going around that uh, <laughs> you had a little fling with, with LeBron James, man. A so, fling? Yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I, 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 I ain't heard that. Hey. Uh, I heard that. I heard that. I ain't 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 heard I need now to ask the question mouth, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> about LeBron. Yeah, okay, yeah, so about, about it was it was harmless. Um, it wasn't a fling. It was harmless. So we were all in the Olympic Village and the basketball players, you know, they don't ever stay in the village because they're too high profile. They stay like at the Ritz or something like elsewhere. Um, and so they um, actually came in the village to see Michael Phelps. Um, a couple of them, I think, were pretty close with Michael. And so. The other swimmers, you know, caught wind that they were coming. And so we all go downstairs to meet them. And then soon it's like the entire Olympic village is there surrounding them. Um, anyway, so I was talking to, um, I think I was talking to Kevin Love and um, I'm trying to think of who else. Um, and obviously LeBron was there. And so we were just talking and he was super nice. And we took a photo together and then we were just talking and he was like, I think he said he was like asking me where the dining hall was in the village. I was like, Oh, it's just over there. You know, like I was giving him directions. He was like, okay, cool. Like, do you want to come with me? Eat with me? <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, Oh, thanks. But 
I actually said we had a curfew, which was true. Um, the swimmers had a, this is so bad. I know it sounds horrible. We had a 1030 curfew to get back in our dorms or we were fined $2,000. Like swimmer, the swim team was like super strict. So it was like 10, 15 or something. And so I told him I had a curfew, but he was really sweet. And um, anyway, so that's all it was. That's all it was. That's crazy. It was you, you probably would have paid that two G's to hang out with you. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I, heard, I, heard, I heard what happens in the Villa stays in the Olympic Village, man. That is true. That is true. <laughs> but it was harmless. Yeah. Nothing juicy. I know. Everyone wants it to be. But. Only, the, only the, the largest figure in sports. But okay. I know. It was awesome. He was so nice and so sweet. Yeah, you really had to take cool. that $2,000 fine. No, <laughs> I'll, like, I'll bill it to LeBron. I'll just That's like, what I'm saying. Here you go. Yeah. <laughs> Here's your bill. <laughs> so Dom, Dom uh, allow Dom to have the tea. So uh, no, nah, that's cool. We get to the basics of the, of the thing. So I was, I was going to ask, like, is anybody else on the team training for the Olympics, or do you have to do things outside of like your regular schedule to get ready for? That's that? a really good question. So, um, you know, kind of like going back to the Olympic trials. So there were maybe 20, 25 UVA swimmers at that time that made the Olympic trials. So we were all training for the Olympic trials, um, you know, but we didn't really obviously find out until the month before the Olympics, who, who was going to make the Olympics. So after I made the Olympics, um, I flew back to Charlottesville and I trained with my coach, Mark Bernardino by myself. Um, maybe with like one other guy, um, Matt McLean was another guy that made it. He was, I think two years older. So he had already graduated, but he came back. So we were training together, just the two of us for probably like, you know, a week. And then at that point, um, team USA, like flew all the Olympic swimmers out, you know, to our first training trip. So for basically like a month, I was like on the road with the Olympic, you know, swimmers, like going to various training trips and doing like various appearances before the Olympics. So we only like got kind of like solo training time for like maybe a week. Yeah. Solid. Um, I guess like what, what is the, um, um, I guess, so we already talked about you coming back to school after you went to the Olympics, but essentially like in that process of training in Charlottesville, do you guys like live at the, Aquatic Center? <laughs> <Do y'all live? laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah, I, God, I spent a lot of time there. Um, you know, whenever we had like break, like fall break, you know, we were only allowed to go home, I think for like a few days for Thanksgiving, you know, we had to go back to training. So Christmas break, same thing. We would go home for Christmas. I think we had to be back. I forget when, but you know, we didn't get a whole lot of time off. So yeah, I was there. I, basically lived there you know other than sleeping i was there a lot it makes sense yeah. um but essentially like okay now this is another question how, how do you get faster like how do you get faster like you're already one of the top people in the country and you know your times like so what do you train on you only swim one stroke so what do you how do you train and a really good idea that's a really good question chase no yeah so um like before i went to college i had a lot of improvement a lot of room for growth because Um, Number one, I wasn't doing doubles. So I was only swimming once a day in high school or in leading up to high school. Um, Number two, I wasn't lifting weights consistently. Um, I was maybe lifting like once a week or something. So I had a lot of room for improvement from high school to college. But then once I was in college, you know, like to your question, to your point, how do you constantly consistently improve, you know, year after year? Um, you know, it's kind of a combination of, um, you know, we had a nutritionist. So um, really just making sure like your nutrition is on key, you know, you're taking, you know, the right kind of, you know, legal supplements, you're getting the right kinds of nutrients in your, in your body. And then number two, just kind of like playing with different, um, you know, weight training or cross training. Um, that was always, always really important. Um, and just kind of like, being like a student of the sport and just Mm. learning like different ways. Like I'm sure you guys do with football, like, you know, like seeing like what your competitors are doing, like watching, you know, videos of them or or just kind of like being a student and like really trying to like soak it up and and learn. So it's hard though. It's like with swimming, you're, you're, you know, only dropping like hundredths or tenths of a second, you know, each time. So it's like, how do you shave off 
just like a tiny bit of time, like how do you get faster just to shave off like a tenth of a second from your time, which is like a huge difference, you know, it's just, I don't know, it's, it's, uh, it's definitely challenging. Yeah. Do, you, do they have things like, so I'm just thinking of it, like from a runner's perspective, we're trying to get faster forties and you guys are trying to just be fast swimmers, obviously. So we're always like putting resistance bands, um, yep. those type of things. Are y'all doing those things in the water? Like that type of thing? Yes. Yeah. So we've got um, resistance band training. Um, we've got, um, I forget what they call it, but like these big gallon, like these big buckets that you fill with water and they're attached to um, like a weight rack. And so you're like swimming like resistance um, kind of that way. And um, yeah, a lot of different kind of unique things. Um, the coach that's actually coaching EVA now, Todd DeSorbo is a really like creative and, and um kind of like um out of the box thinker with swimming and so i know that he does a lot of like really unique things and and tries to bring in like a lot of different techniques into like you know the training that they do so it's really yeah there's a lot of different things you can do but yeah you hit the nail on the head for sure so i don't know i'm gonna with me and you were talking on the same swim level you know them two down. that's right <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like, with turns and all that yeah. oh yeah so, <laughs> So let's go back to uh, London. So we're, we're in the Olympics. Um, is everybody cool? Everybody close? Like as far as on the swim team and all those different type of things, y'all do everything together. Um, and then also, uh, how was your experience there? And then after that, do y'all keep up with each other in that type of situation? Yeah. So, um, yeah, everyone was really close. Um, you know, there were 50 of us, 25 men, 25 women. Um, it, that year in 2012, it was an interesting mix of like rookies, like myself, first time Olympians, and then the veterans like Michael Phelps, Ryan Lochte, Natalie Coughlin, people like that, that have been to, you know, multiple Olympics. Um, but so it was, it was really nice. The, the veteran swimmers were like really kind of, you know, helpful and encouraging to the rookies. And so we had a really good like bond and yeah, everyone was super close. Um, and then after the Olympics, um, you know, I've, I, you know, it's been a little while now I've, I've kept up with several, but you know, I, it's hard. It's, um, when you don't see or train with them on a daily basis, it, you kind of lose touch. And, um, but yeah, there are, there are several that, um, I ended up training with here in Charlotte, um, when I moved here. So I, I did keep in touch with them. How likely is it to live off of your swim career? Like, is Michael Phelps the only person that can really live off that? Or do you have to, can like the regular, regular Olympian? No, no that's that's yeah. It is, it is very, very difficult. Um, I did the, the pro swim thing for about a year, year and a half. And I, I mean, I had to work part time, you know, and swim. So that, you know, did not work out well. But, there, there are a few like Michael Phelps, Ryan Lochte, like some of like the top of, you know, the sport that do make enough to sustain themselves. But otherwise, yeah, everyone else is. Is that all sponsorship? Draping along. What? Yeah. It's all sponsorships that they're making money off of. Yeah. So sponsorships. Um, I, I did have a swimsuit sponsor. Um, Tier Sport sponsored me. Um, got free product and you know some a stipend every year, but. Um, but yeah, a lot of them are sponsorships mm -hmm. or, you know, for swimming as well, when you're at a pro level, um, you can actually win money at swim meet. So, um, they'll have a purse, you know, for the top, I don't know, top three or something. Um, and you can win a, a decent amount of money. Yeah. Mm, only the top three. I don't know. I could be wrong. <laughs> Maybe top oh, eight. Man. But... I know it's track. If you were like the top eight though, if you place in the top okay. eight at the end of the meet. Maybe. Yeah. No, you, you're pretty. Right, right. I don't. There maybe you'll win something. I don't know. Like that's what they do. That's what they do. Suit right there is the fact that once you got out the water of your race, everybody got a ribbon. Everybody. Got <laughs> <laughs> You're talking summer league. Summer league is like great. Thanks for participating. Yeah. Next. <laughs> <laughs> like last place was like a green ribbon or something like. That. <laughs> like <bro>. yeah. <laughs> Those were the good days. Let me tell you. Those were the good days. Well, my sister has a room full of uh, green ribbons. <laughs> <laughs> that's great. Dang, awesome. Yeah. That's awesome. Uh, so, so yeah, we are. So you're you're swimming part time. You're one of the best swimmers in the world, and you have a part time gig. Uh, was it in the commercial real estate space, or were you doing something else? Um, I don't think it, it was. Uh, I was working for a nonprofit. I think 
Yeah, I was just working for a nonprofit in Charlotte. It wasn't it wasn't real estate. Um, I got connected to the job. Um, actually, the the coach of my pro team kind of got me connected. But yeah, no, I um, kind of towards the end of my pro career when I was starting to like phase out, um, I was kind of like taking some real estate classes and like kind of starting to figure it out at that point. But yeah. We always talk about transitioning out of sport. So was that a difficult process for you? It seemed like you you kind of were like, when did you start realizing like, all right, I'm, I'm not going to, did it, did you have that moment, that pivot? Moment? Yeah, I, I did. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh yeah. It was tough. I struggled. Like, I mean, you know, any sport, when you retire from any sport that you've been doing your entire life, it is like the carpets ripped out, you know, out from under you. It's just crazy. It's a weird feeling. Um, so I, for about a, I'd say about six months, I was kind of like battling this, you know, like, what do I do? Because I, so I ended up having two elbow surgeries within a year. Mm -hmm. Um, this was after I graduated and then my back injury that I had surgery on the back injury, like flared back up again. It's it's not so dangerous. (laughs) No, it's just like, I have the like rarest weirdest injuries like they're not normal swimmers are supposed to have shoulder injuries not elbow and back it is really odd um so i just it became like very clear that i was not able to like train at that level and you know after my second elbow surgery i was like i just like i literally just recovered and now i have another surgery i have to do the same thing again it's like it just like kills you you know so I just, you know, that kind of helped me make my decision. Um, and I just, you know, I felt like I kind of, in a way, like fallen out of love with the sport. I think really because of my injuries, I was just really negative and kind of down on myself. So, um, you know, it, it was, it was, uh, the right time to exit the sport. And now looking back, I'm really glad I did. And it was difficult, but I've found my way and <laughs> took me a little while to find my feet after, but you know, it all worked out. So. Don't you think that would have made it a little bit easier, though, to, uh, like, leave the sport? Like, just like, yeah. like, for me, I know when I was done, I was done. I was like, man, yeah. I quit in the middle of the season, actually. We oh, you, quit, you quit in the middle of the season, boy. <laughs> <laughs> now, when you said you came to work in flip-flops because your foot. <laughs> Yo, I had a, yeah, man, I was playing, I was playing two weeks with a bone bruise on it. What, with a bone bruise, and I still had to go to work. no games. His teammate yeah. weren't no games. He quit in the middle of the season. <laughs> We was on five, man, and it was just looking bad. And and I'm going to work with a freaking bone bruise on my foot. So I got flip-flops on my feet in the office, limping Girl. everywhere. And I got to go to practice at 7 o'clock. And I was like, bro, I'm not playing. No, nah, I'm not doing this, man. Yeah. I went down there and just turned it in, man. I was like. Go, yeah. like, the injuries will do that to you, man. They'll, they'll, they make, do. they'll make that transition quick, boy. I remember, I remember my my uh, coming to Jesus moment was for sure when I was laying on the turf in Toronto, and I was thinking, man, I just tore my Achilles. I just tore uh, my Achilles, and I'm like, I'm up here in Toronto. I don't know nobody out here. I don't know what the <laughs> rules is for the Canadian Football League about. Oh no, they might just ship me home with this torn Achilles or something. So I was like, man. I had a couple of tears. Uh, and after those couple of tears, I was like, man, you gotta, we gotta figure out what we're about to do next and uh yeah. get out of here. So that was about yeah. it. Max is, only, Max is the only smart person, I guess. Well, maybe right. <laughs> <he's the only laughs> that was like not gonna Y'all got that. <laughs> <laughs> Hey man, look, I knew I was gonna make millions doing that, man. So I was like, let me just get a head start. That's it. Know, Max, you. you never had a surgery. Never had surgery before. I, oh, I you didn't like, play hard enough. <laughs> Hey man, I had I had a stress fracture in my foot that I almost had to get surgery for. Now it's because Dom won a horse car tackle me in practice. Yeah, that's um, right, man. Uh, it's so, that football is so yeah. tough on y'all's bodies. I don't get yeah. it. It's I so tough. Torn, torn PCL, torn meniscus, but I just never got surgery on them. True, Lauren, you may have yeah. worse yeah. surgeries than us. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, you, you done broke your back, girl. <laughs> that's true. Uh, but, hey. So let's go ahead and say, so you get it. So what made you want to jump into the real estate game? You know, um, I don't really know. It was like an epiphany almost. Like I was just like woke up one day and I was like, oh, I want to do commercial real estate. I don't know. It was um, really strange. I didn't have any family. A lot of so commercial real estate is like um, there's a lot of like legacies in the industry where like, you know, your dad's dad, dad, you know, was a developer, you know, 
of land, whatever. And he created this company and then you're working for it. And then there, it just kind of trickles down. But I, we didn't have, I didn't have that in my family. Um, I just knew a family friend who was in commercial real estate and down in Miami. And I was like, that seems really interesting and really kind of, you know, fast paced and like different. And so I just kind of made the decision like, and just went after it and got my real estate license and just started networking and um, landed an internship and then got at my first job and then have since moved on um, to another company where I am now currently. So it just all kind of fell into place and I haven't really looked back, but yeah, I, sometimes I think I'm like, how did I make that decision? <laughs> like to get into this, it was like super random and I don't know. So uh, we're in the middle of a pandemic. Uh, we know who who knows how long this is going to last. We it started in March. We're in December <laughs> right now. Yeah, it looks like well, it's going to be a full year. When it first started, I thought it was going to be just a couple months. You know, now it looks like about to be a full. I know year. it's crazy. Um, how has it affected commercial real estate? That's a really good question. So I am in the retail field of commercial real estate, which obviously has taken a huge hit. Um, We, you know, our shopping centers in North and South Carolina, a lot of the businesses have been, you know, they were closed, I think, you know, for a few months um, earlier on in the pandemic and have since reopened, but at capacity, you know, all the gyms, the fitness centers are like really struggling. Um, It's just a mess. Um, You know, it's, I don't know. I I don't really know what the future is um, for retail. Um, I think, businesses are working to figure it out. And I think they're kind of evolving to figure it out, you know, like having more takeout services or delivery services, drive up, pick up, whatever. They're figuring it out, but um, it's just sad because we're losing a lot of businesses, you know, that, that can't figure it out. So. The brick and mortar, the brick and mortar space is in a, is in a, is in a dire space right now where people are trying to. It really is. Yeah. Where we're going with this. So that's my. It really is. So, yeah, Max, Dom, you guys have any questions? Uh, you kind of answered it. I was going to ask you what, what, um, like, how'd you get into commercial real estate versus residential? Because I don't really know anybody that really just like how yeah. usually graduate to commercial, you know. So. so, yeah, that's a good question. I um, I don't know. I just I felt like commercial, um, like kind of what you said, like it was more challenging to get into, and I I like a challenge, and I. Um, I liked that it was um, commercial real estate is largely a male dominated field. There's not a whole lot of women. The women that are in the field are, you know, very strong and like, you know, kind of go getters. And so, and then flip flop with residential, you know, not to be like, you know, sexist or whatever, but it just seems like there's a lot more women in in residential than men. And so I just, I just like kind of like the challenge of commercial real estate and, um, I also knew a bunch of athletes, you know, that got into it um, and that were really successful. And so I just, I don't know. Yeah, it's a good question. I just was really kind of interested in, in the challenge of it all. So, so not that residential isn't challenging. I don't want to offend anybody, <laughs> but um, I just wanted something a little different, you know. No, I can dig it. And not dealing with people's emotions and buying their first home. <laughs> <laughs> a lot to deal with, let me tell you. Yeah, I went with. through it. I know personally. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, I know you said you're in retail, so I'm not how much you know about like, you know, commercial spaces, like apartment buildings. But, you know, from your experience, do you think that like, you know, cities like New York are like hurt, done? Um, and a lot of land, you know, landlords are having to sell their buildings and stuff like that at this kind of rates. Do you think that after the pandemic's hopefully over that like cities will still be cities or do you feel more people are going to move out to, you know, suburbs since working from home is now seen as like a very viable option? That's a really good question, Max. And honestly, we've already seen like the exodus, mm-hmm. you know, from, from big cities, um, just within our like portfolio, for instance, we own a property down on Kiowa Island, which is right outside of Charleston. It's like a really nice community, like super expensive homes. And we own this little shopping center there. And a lot of the homeowners actually have like second homes. You know, like they live, you know, they, they spend most of their time in like New York or New Jersey, whatever. Yeah. And we're finding that like a lot of these people are actually like moving down there like permanently. Right. Um, or, you know, the home sales, I think we're like four times what it typically is, you know, like a lot of people are just buying homes and moving down. And, and so I think it is kind of similar, like for the suburbs, you know, of a, of a big city, I think 
Yeah, I mean, it's sad. I, I don't know. And with a lot of these companies, you know, sending their employees to work from home, I think um, there is going to be some movement, you know, outside of the big cities to more suburb living, but um, which isn't a good thing. You know, we need our, our cities. So we will see. Well, we need to just, everyone needs to get back to work. <laughs> yeah. I, know downtown LA, I know a couple people that have moved from downtown LA. Like, hey, man, this is a, it's too much going on around here. So yeah, yeah. I know for sure I was down there and I was there specifically for the Lakers games, uh, a couple conferences, things of that nature. None of those things was happening. I said, I come back home, man. Come back to Kentucky right now because my lease ended and I was like, mm, that's not renewed right now. Let's wait. Let's wait till things <laughs> yeah. see what we do with this thing. Uh, for so sure. Yeah, that's my thought process. So my last thing before we get over here is, does UVA swimming retire your swimsuit or something like that? <laughs> <laughs> I was wondering that too. How does that work? <laughs> your, 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 your swim cap is from your goggles. Your goggles. Yeah, that's a, I don't know. That's a good question. I don't um I don't think they do. There is like we do have a um UVA Hall of Fame for swimming. Um I'm not in it uh yet. I don't you know, I don't know like the nomination process or whatever, but I think that's all like I think that's kind of the extent of the like, you know, um kind of hall of fame retiring or whatever but no we don't we don't retire a swimsuit or anything <laughs> I, I can't remember i've been to the afc in so long or the aquatic team and I, but i used to because i used to train like i used to do tuesday thursday in the pool like swimming uh that's awesome sauna room you know do that that was my tuesday thursday routine and i used to know exactly what was in that room but is there not like is there a record board or is there like a like is it what, is, what am i looking at there's something over there about a diving yeah board. you're right yeah there's a record board um like right kind of to the left of the diving boards on the wall yeah is, is that where the hall of fame is as well the hall i mean <laughs> if you want to call it that i don't i mean the record board kind of is like in a way i mean it's you know like my i, I think i still have like maybe one or two records up there but yeah, like so, your name stays up there, you know, on the board until someone breaks that record, um, and then their name is replaced by it. But um, yeah, I don't, I don't know where the Hall of Fame is. I, it might just be like, it might just be like, I don't know, invisible, <laughs> like a term. I'm not sure. <laughs> well, winning a gold medal has to get your uh, goggles and your cap retired or something like yeah. that. Yeah. Maybe. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. Be first ballot, man. It's almost ten years, man. You, you got to be first ballot. And, yeah, and, and, gotta, and, I don't you know. There, UVA's, UVA's had a lot of, you know, like Leah Smith was one of the more recent. She was a 2016 Olympian, and so um, and she won, I think, at least one or two medals. So I don't know. I I've got like some competition, you know. You want to go? I thought you was the only one from UVA. I want to go, right? Hold on, Lauren. Did uh did did Claire Crippen go to the, the London tour? No, no. Um, she didn't. Her I want to say her sister her sister may have Maddie or not London but may have been in another Olympics but Claire did not no all right yeah they were, you know there was big in Philly I remember that man it was like all no crazy. the Crippins are great yeah great people so sure. you want to start a petition to, uh get your cap and goggles in the front of the <laughs> uh, yes I love it that's <laughs> so, awesome that's um last so cool. my last thing before we get over here is um um Dang, I can't even remember it no more. That's crazy. We're going to have to get that good edit on. Um, you got to edit that out. <laughs> well, Lauren, uh, we appreciate you jumping on here. Um, let everybody know where they can find you, reach you at, all those different types of things. Keep up with you. Yeah, my um, Instagram um, is uh, Lo, was my nickname in college, uh, L O. And then my last, my maiden name is Purdue, P E R D U E. So Lo Purdue is my Instagram. And then my Twitter, I think, is also the same thing, Lo Purdue as well. And I'm on Facebook and all that good stuff. But that's about it. My That's the extent of my social media knowledge. That's about it. <laughs> Perfect. This is the question I was thinking of. Do you miss it? Do you miss swimming? Do you miss competing? Like, wh where are you at in that hip school? I do. I, so I miss competing. Um, I still have, like, that competitive drive and, like, nowhere to put it, you know, except through work, which I guess is a good thing. But, um, yeah, so I, I miss just, like, the competitiveness of it. And I miss my teammates. 
Um, I don't miss the training and I don't miss having to have surgery or like being in pain, but, um, everything else I miss and yeah, it's, it's a great sport and every sport, you know, to be able to do that and to be able to make, you know, somewhat of a career and and to have it take you places, you know, it's just really a blessing. Well, you guys like, y'all guys like live in the water. You know what I'm saying? Like it's different than like trying. I have webbed, webbed fingers. <laughs> just like, kidding, I don't. <laughs> live in the water. So it's like when now you're done doing this, like it's like your whole life is different. It feels like. It's you- like a fish out of water. And you hear the expression. I mean, that is <laughs> what it's like. Yeah. Right. Different. We appreciate you jumping on here. Uh, Thank you guys. And it was fun. Fun catching up with you. Talking yeah. to you. Y'all asked some great questions. Appreciate it. Glad everything's going well. We'll highlight you guys next week. Who's Where's Podcast? We out.